this is Tamara from Mooglyblog.com, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate a stitch that's called the Tunisian Bump Stitch or the Tunisian Top Stitch. I'm going to demonstrate this stitch using Lion Brand Collection Superwash Merino and a Tunisian hook. Now here I have a small sample, let me move it to the back to the front of my hook, of the Tunisian Top Stitch. And the reason this has two names is that it doesn't really have, as far as I know, any particular official name of its own. It's a stitch I came up with and called the Tunisian Top Stitch because of the way it's worked. And then I had a commenter on a pattern I used it on tell me that they'd seen it before as the Tunisian Bump Stitch. But I haven't been able to find it anywhere else. Um, so like a lot of stitches, it's just whatever you want to call it. You can see it makes this really great sort of squared off mesh and each stitch is worked right above the other one. Now I'm going to make this video assuming you have some knowledge of Tunisian stitches already. So I've already got the first few rows of it worked and I'll just show you how to work this particular stitch. If you need the Tunisian basics, I do have a Tunisian basics video both on mooglyblog.com and on YouTube. So as you can see, it's time for the return pass. This is not the section where this particular stitch is made or what makes this stitch different. It's worked as a standard return pass, but I want to show you a little trick at the end of it that helps with this stitch. So to work these stitches off, I have 17 of them. I'm going to, as usual, pull just once through the first loop and then start working them off in pairs, just as you normally would. Like so. Again, this is a pretty standard way of doing the return pass with Tunisian stitches. Let me pull up a little more yarn from my skein here. There we go. If this is by chance the first Tunisian video you're watching, um, again, it's a great idea to start off with the basics. But as you can see, Tunisian is a very different way of making crochet stitches. Some say it's a little bit like knitting in that you have a bunch of stitches at once, but at the same time, after this return pass, you only end up with one, which is more like crochet. So here we are coming to the end. I've got two hooks left, or two, excuse me, two stitches left on the hook. So as I work these two off, what I'm going to do is I want to grab this little bit of the yarn right here. Let's see if I can show it a little better. There we are kind of grab it with my other hand and hold on to it so that it's easier to find. I pull through those two and then the reason I've held on to that little bit of yarn right there is because that's where I'm going to stick my hook to start working the forward pass. And it just makes it a little bit easier to find. Now in most Tunisian stitches, let me kind of put my hook there to hold it safe. In most Tunisian stitches you're working down into these, these excuse me, these vertical posts in this stitch, you're going to work into the little hump at the top. And as you can see, as you work them off, that's the hump that's formed on the uh, return pass. So I'm going to go into that first one there and pull up a loop. And with this stitch, this is where it's easy to check your work a little bit. You're going to have a loop on your hook directly above the vertical bar of the stitch below. And then when you make each stitch here, you're going to go into that hump right there at the top. Okay, so what you're going to do is go into the next one right there. Make sure you're not going into any of these vertical bars or this one in front. You want the one that humps right over the top. Insert your hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Then go to the next one. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Look for the next one right there. Insert your hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. And you can see why I started calling this the Tunisian top stitch, because it's worked into the very top of each stitch. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. So at the end of the row, you should still have 17 loops on the hook again, or however many you started with. 
for this stitch. You don't need any particular number of stitches to begin with. It could be one, it could be 300, any number at all. You don't have to worry about stitch multiples to make this pattern. You just have to make sure that you're working the same number of getting the same number of loops on the forward pass every time. That's how you count it to make sure you're staying on track. So as I approach the end here, hopefully I will have 17 loops on the hook. If I don't, it means I missed one somewhere. Now typically, if you are missing one, the easiest one to miss is that first one, which is why I said when you make your return pass, you always want to grab it with the other hand if you can, just to help you find that one. Now here we are at the end. Now what I've been doing previously is I've been going ahead and working the last stitch right in that top hump, the bump, if you will, as before. Some people, when they work Tunisian, prefer to go into the side for the last stitch. It can give a little bit of a cleaner edge. But for the sake of demonstrating this particular stitch, I'll go ahead and go right into the top. And there you have it. We're right back where we began. And I should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 loops on the hook. And I've made another full set of rows of the Tunisian top stitch or the Tunisian bump stitch. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.